you might be getting up today and you might be thinking, what the hell have I done with my life? I, I mean, I, 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 I don't really have a future. I want you to feel better because I'm going to introduce you to Stephen Kent. <laughs> Uh, he is a guy who has focused, I believe, his entire life on Star Wars. And, um, I mean, knows it, knows everything about it, everything about it. And he has been able to eke out a career. Uh, a and good one. A good one. Seems to be doing really well. A good one. But the American dream is alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really have. I mean, you've taken this and you've taken the Star Wars mythology and, and, um, all of the imagery, and you can so easily learn lessons from today and politics and everything else from Star Wars. Now you have a new book, How the Force Can Fix the World. Oh, yeah. We thought the, uh, it should be How the Force Could Fix America, and then I went into one of those editorial meetings with your publisher, and they're like, but what about the world? <laughs> <laughs> I, guys, I think this is, uh, this is shooting a little bit too big right out of the gate. But, yeah, you know, everything that we face, I think particularly like in the West and American society that we see breaking, whether it be sort of democratic norms, uh, enmity towards our neighbors, political polarization, these are trends happening all across okay, the world. Okay, so let's take... Um... Did you see the uh, did you see the woman? I think it was on CNN who said uh, these these women in Virginia, they're just disgusting and stupid. I'd like to know how can I connect with them? And I think by not saying the first part of that question uh, is probably the answer. Uh, yeah, something like that. I, I was actually looking at that this morning, and it's one of those case and points for. How when you watch a lot of Star Wars, you see a lot of weird connections that I think other people would not otherwise see. This woman, Amy Siskind, she said, I join others in being dismayed and disgusted by these women. She's talking about Virginia's, <laughs> Virginia voters. I don't know how to reach non-college educated white women. The women I can connect with and influence are college-educated white women. I'm open to suggestions, <laughs> she says. Uh, well, oh I, I'm glad. You know, the, the book, Chapter One, deals with Star Wars and the virtue of humility, which is this thing which I think is uh, hard to find in today's culture, whether mm -hmm. it be like Facebook serving us up exactly what we want to see all the time, Twitter echo chambers and us talking to only our own people. But then I was actually thinking, so what's the Star Wars analogy here? And it actually is Star Wars Episode One. The Phantom Menace, everyone's Ooh. favorite movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well received. No, I mean, so there's this great story in there where the, the, the planet let has me, been wait, invaded. Wait, 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 may, may I guess? Oh, please. Okay. That woman should have never been created. <laughs> is that the lesson? That's the lesson I get from episode one. That, uh, ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, is that it? That's the kind of enmity we're yeah, trying to, right. to yeah. wipe away okay, from our society. All right, okay, okay. No, it's, it's, it's all about the Gungans, right? So the Gungans, these incredibly annoying fish yes. hybrids that live on the planet of Naboo. How does Queen Amidala in that movie repel the Trade Federation who have invaded that planet in that movie? She doesn't go to the Gungans and say... I know y'all are, are fish. I know you're kind of disgusting and you smell bad, but we've all been invaded by these droid armies. I really would like your help if you can find time from being uncivil scolds. That's not what she does. The woman takes a knee and says, we beg of your help. We respect you and the mutual greatness of our societies. We need you in this moment. That's not a direct quote. But wait, aren't... Didn't they give birth to Jar Jar Binks? They did. They mm. did. Someone who it's easy, Again. easy to hold contempt for. Again, the <laughs> one thing that you learn, don't make this episode. The subtext of the movie matters a whole lot. There's this interesting line when she goes to the Gungans for help to get this thing in this moment. Boss Nass, the guy who heads up the Gungans, I'm not going to say it in Gungan speak, but in the King's English here, mm -hmm. he says... You saw no thinking you greater than the Gungans? I like this. Maybe we can be friends. He only hated the Naboo and Queen Amidala because he thought the Naboo thought they were better than them. And that was why he was willing to let them die in that movie and be ruled by the droids until she expressed that, no, we don't think you're great. we're greater than you. We need your help. There's a lesson to be learned in that for all of us when how we are trying to relate to people who we want to join us in coalition and politics. Mm -hmm. It's all about contempt. Do you remember Anderson Cooper after the January 6th riot 
you know, whatever you want to no. call it, uh, when he <laughs> mentioned that all the people involved in the Capitol storming event were going to be going back to Olive Garden and the Holiday Inn mm -hmm. with this sort of right. sneer, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, man, these normal people going to Olive Garden, the greatest restaurant in America <laughs> with a white tablecloth that normal people go to to feel like they're having a nice dinner with their families and feel good about themselves. I spent the majority of my 20s going to that restaurant yep. because I barely had any money in my bank account. And I wanted to take my daughter and my wife to a nice place where someone took our order and a white tablecloth meal. Olive Garden was that place. Yeah. yeah. I used to go to Olive Garden all the time <laughs> until I married an Italian. Right. Yeah. No, I, she won't I even still, let me look at I still ask to go every Father's Day because yeah. I want the infinite breadsticks. So yes. can I go back to something you said? What was that quote that you said in the King's English? Could you give that again? Yeah. I mean, so so Boss Nass says to them, you so no thinking you so greater than the Gungans? We so like this. Okay. Maybe we can be friends. So my <laughs> my question is... Did anyone think you would have a success in life? You memorized that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's got to be somebody in your life there's, that went, son, son. There's there's something wrong with me. Uh, I, remember, I remember when my I remember when I first started the Beltway Banthas podcast, which I you love. both of you have been yes. a guest yeah, on. Yeah, so no, you're, and it's great. It is really good. I'm giving you a hard time. You're complicit in what has happened to me. Yeah. Uh, but I remember I remember my dad uh, gave me a pat on the shoulder over dinner. He was like, "Son." Don't let this become a distraction. <laughs> yeah. Five, yeah. Five, five years, five years later, it's all I do. Yeah. Uh, so here we are. But good, uh... good for you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Dad. Sorry, Dad. Uh, so um, I I think of the one quote that I remember from I don't know episode one of the first three. Mm. Uh, this is the way. A republic ends, or mm -hmm. this is the way freedom dies, mm -hmm. something like that. With thunderous applause. Correct. I think of that all the time. Mm -hmm. What, what, what do you look at and say? This is this is the Star Wars story happening right now. Yeah. So I mean, it has to be popular consent for things that take away your freedoms. I, I think. My sort of waking up moment as a political person was, of course, the post 9-11 era, the Patriot Act and, you know, the government being willing to just take everything that can get with the popular consent of the people who want to be safe. Mm -hmm. We all understand that. And we're all looking at the pandemic very much the same way. This is never going to end. They're going to take, take, take as long as there are people saying, please keep us safe. We never want to be in harm's way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's real. And I love that line a lot. But one thing that I also go to is in episode two, Padme and Anakin are having their little date in the field on Naboo. It's an awful scene. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's I think really I fast forwarded it's, through that. It's yeah. really like one of the, the one of the worst acted scenes in the movie. But it's really important, and for this reason, Anakin and Padme are talking about politics and how it should work. And she says, what kind of system would you like? And Anakin says, I want a system where the politicians sit down and discuss what's in the best interest of the people, and then they do it. And she says, well, that's how we, what we already do, but the trouble is people don't agree. He says, well, they should be made to. Who's going to make them? You, not me, someone wise. Right there mm -hmm. is the totalitarian instinct that a lot of us have. A lot of us have little dormant totalitarian tendencies mm. that we say no to because we believe in liberty. We believe in it despite the things that we want to control. So can you tell me, and this is an honest question. I, I, by the way, that's a hundred times more than I took out of that scene. Just what it, you just said. I, yeah. I think it's, I I think it's the most important one. Yeah. Yeah. Great, I, I, I remember, I, yeah. once you said it, I remembered that too. I blocked it from my memory because <laughs> all of those are so bad. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, this is an honest question. Yeah. How can the people who are writing and filming these damn things mm -hmm. not mm. understand the point? Because they always think it's about the other people out there who don't see the world they do. They're always looking at their movies and going, yeah, we love freedom, but those other people don't. We have a special knack for putting masks on people that we don't see the world the same as or who we don't agree with and cartoonizing their points of view. And in Star Wars, you see this in every single movie, bad guys wearing masks and then heroes who have the task of trying to see past them and know that there is a person under there, whether it be cute boy Kylo Ren or Darth Vader. Like it is the call of heroes to try to rise to the occasion on that. 
unmask people and treat them like people. So what I got from that is that Fauci is a Sith Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It is hard not, not to. Yeah. It is hard not yeah. to. And it's and it's kind of one of those things. It's just like when the guy is given sort of the the mandate to rule, keep everybody safe, and you just see no inkling of of a possibility that this guy's going to let it go. Like it's going to be the pa- the forever pandemic, yeah, yeah. endemic. And what does that mean for the public health establishment that they're always going to be around? You saw what they did last year where they got rid of eviction moratoriums. Mm -hmm. The CDC getting involved in housing, it's incredibly egregious. And we cannot just like sit back and applaud that they're going to do this. Nobody elected them to do anything like that. They're giving away our freedoms step by step. Eventually, we're going to have to accept reasonable risk and get back to life. Uh, the name of the book is uh, How the Force Can Fix the World. Um, there is there is one thing that I've always appreciated from you is... Only one? <laughs> don't push me. Uh, no, uh, the, the fact that you can take lessons from popular culture, because Stu and I were talking about this earlier today. Everything is gone. If it wasn't for mm-hmm. podcasts... And honestly, talk radio and up to a point Fox News, this country would be over because there would be no opposition to any of it. There'd be no opposition in the mainstream. But we've lost our churches. We've lost our schools. We've lost many of our organizations. The Boy Scouts are doing, you know, there's a there's a uh, for equity and justice. There's now a patch for it. So we've lost everything. There are a few stories that still teach truth, and Star Wars is one of them. It's four four generations of truth in that story, just the longing for freedom and the tension between wanting order and then wanting to breathe free. That's what this story has always been, and it's something that I'm encouraged by because— even when we know that like the left wing right meddles in popular culture, they meddle in Star Wars too, just like they meddle in everything. The message has still kind of always been the same, yeah. which is that if you give away too much, you're never going to live free. And there's going to be people who rise together to stop it. And I think some of the details, we get really too hung up on those. And Star Wars is this story that as everything that we share together starts to crumble around us. I'm not suggesting we replace the Bible, but <laughs> no. if you if you come at somebody yeah. with like Bible verses first thing, they're not going to be listening to you if they're if they're not a person of faith. Mm. But why don't you talk to them about the idea? I think this is a perfect script. I mean, this this teaches the scriptures just not in script. This is this is the message Yoda could be Jesus. I mean, <laughs> he could you know, be. in, I in many him. ways, he teaches exactly the same things. And that, that chapter I told you about with like humility and just taking a knee before someone that you need their help. Yeah. The whole chapter ties the Phantom Menace to Matthew 18, the idea that we need to be as children if we are to be true followers of Christ. And that requires us to be humble and know that we need help from others. The name of the book is How the Force Can Fix the World by Stephen Kent. It's available everywhere. 